Hey guys, welcome to this rough and ready video on how to set up your brand new HP Reverb. Um, this might not be the definitive way to set it up, but this is just, you know, I've been asked a few times in the uh, my comments to just do a video of what my settings are. and So this is it really, um, it's very simple. Uh, I'm no technical guru or anything like that, but uh, as you can see from many of my videos, my reverb is running perfectly, so if this is any help to someone, then it's been worth doing it really. But um, admittedly, you know, a lot of people say Windows Mixed Reality is a nightmare. Well, I don't think it's a nightmare. It actually works very well, to be honest. Um, but it isn't as intuitive as, say, the Oculus software. But you have to think, when it comes to the HP Reverb, it's not really designed specifically to be a gaming headset. It's a professional device and it's used for training um, and all sorts of applications and flight simming is just one of the things that really benefits from that beautiful 2160 by 2160 resolution. So yeah, it might not be as quick and easy to set up as the Rift, but you know, trust me, it's worth your time. Now I thought, first of all, really point you to this website here called uh, let's have a look here vr4dcs.com now I know you know if you're not interested in DCS that's fine this is same things apply now all of this stuff here is really important and if you go through it step by step this is exactly what I did the first time I plugged my reverb in now um, I won't you know, walk you through what to do when you plug it all in because basically that's pretty simple. It's just a step-by-step -step process of configuring your controls and all that kind of stuff. Hopefully, this has not always been the case, but when you are, say, an X-Plane, the controllers are already configured properly. Now, some people haven't had that uh, and they haven't been bound properly to the various buttons. Now, that is a bit annoying, admittedly, but you can still go through that process and customise your controls uh, which is pretty easy to do really but this is more to do with the actual setting up of the reverb in terms of uh, steam vr and all that kind of stuff so if we just go through this really you know you can see here it says you need to have and this is really important and this is one of the uh, areas where i've really seen a massive Im uh, improvement in the reverb from my first version of it and that is the windows 10 1903 update this is imperative. This actually increases the resolution. Um, I know it sounds crazy, but it actually increases the, I suppose it's driver um, related, that makes that resolution really pop. Um, and I was quite taken back. I think it's probably a good 30%, 40% sharper than my first experience with the resolution of the reverb. Now that is in part as well to the Windows Mixed Reality Portal. Sorry, not the Windows Mixed Reality Portal, the Windows Mixed Reality for Steam VR Beta. Now, you need to make sure that you download this as well. Now, if I just open Steam, okay, there's always an update that needs to be doing. Right, I'll get back to you in a second. <laughs> okay, so here we are in Steam. Now, if you haven't already done this, you may already know this, but this is just for, you know, starting from the basics is important. Uh, if you type in the search bar, Windows uh, Mixed Reality for Steam VR, this is what you need, okay? And not just this, once you've downloaded it, you need to make sure that it's the beta of this. Now to do that, if we right click onto that, go to properties, and then updates, you can see it, automatic updates, uh, oh sorry, that's wrong, continue on, betas, that's what you need, select the beta you would like to opt into, so probably when you first download it, it'll be here, the non opt out of all be betas, now make sure you have that enabled, again, this brings the resolution uh, in Steam VR to just in unprecedented levels it's fantastic uh, and it actually is a lot sharper in 60 Hertz mode as well which I'll go into in fact I'll go into that now so if we go back into the Windows Mixed Reality portal okay so in the Windows Mixed Reality portal you'll notice here that my 
version of the reverb is VR1000-2XXX. Now you need to make sure that you are running that. If it says 1, then you need to be getting a hold to, of HP or whoever you've got that particular reverb from and get it exchanged because you have the old version. That's really important. Now if you come down here, you'll see see more. Just click your mouse and go to settings. If we go down to headset display, I have my visual quality set to high. Now I have used the very high setting as well, but I find high is, uh, you know, fine. I'd rather have it, uh, I don't really like the word beta. I think that's, mm, I'm not sure if I want to try that so much. And some people have noticed a bit of a, what do you call it, kind of fisheye effect with the very high setting. So I've just left it at high. Uh, obviously, best quality, that's what you want. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend upscaling or anything like that. Just keep it on best quality. And here is the big one right here. Now, I have noticed a few people complain about the sweet spot on the reverb. Now, one when I've kind of asked them, well, what what is your IPD? I usually either find one of two answers. My IPD is around the 70 mark or around the sort of low 50s. Now, as you can see here, unfortunately, this is one of the reverbs I can, I, I guess, negative points. You know, it's it's a shame and it's annoying. I don't know why they haven't opted for a manual IPD display, particularly because the reverb has two different displays. So it could have been possible, unlike the Rift S, which has one display. Um, I'm very lucky that I've got an IPD of 65, which is the optimum IPD for this headset. And I think this is part of the reason why I'm having such a great time with it. But if you're on the lower end, like my fiance is, or the higher end, you may struggle. So don't give up completely. Just, you know, still try it, but make sure that you can return it. That is the real important factor because uh, you might struggle. And if you do end up buying a reverb, if you haven't already, clear your calendar, make sure you spend some decent time with it. Otherwise, you know, if you spend half an hour in it, yeah, it's great. But when you do that massive flight across the sea like I have or whatever, and you're in it for a couple of hours or more, you might get eye strain. Uh, and this is crucial. You need to make sure that you measure your IPD correctly. I would recommend going to the opticians, actually, and getting it done professionally so you really know. So if we move down a bit, we have got uh, experience options. Right, so change. I leave this on 90 hertz. Um, I wouldn't really recommend automatic. I don't think it really works anyway. If you're really, I mean, you could try 60 hertz. What this means basically is that if you are able to run at 60 hertz, that means asynchronous time warp uh, will be able to be switched on at 30 frames per second which means you'll get a bit better performance, but unfortunately the screen is a bit flashy for me. I can't really uh, cope with it. Now with the Windows Mixed Reality Steam VR Beta, that is better, but for me, I still can't cope with that sort of flashing, strobing effect, <coughs> excuse me. So I leave it at 90 hertz, but feel free to mess around with this, but you're gonna get the best quality with 90 hertz. That does mean though that you'll need to hit that sweet 45 frames per second in order to get the smoothest possible performance. Okay, so moving on now to Steam VR. We'll just load this in now. Might take a while, so I'll get back to you in a second. Okay, so here we are in the Steam VR settings. I'll just actually, in case you don't know how to get to it, this is your little Steam VR window here. Click on this here and then go down to settings. This has caused all sorts of confusion and it depends on which Steam VR uh, software you're using. So make sure it's the, the up-to-date one. Now in your applications, right here, make sure, don't worry too much about this percentage slider because there is a bit of difference and some people use 150%, 160%. Um, I'm not quite sure why that is, but uh, just this bit here is the most important. Now you can see here, I'm actually upscaling a little bit, 2040, sorry, 2460 by 2408. That gives me 100%. Now the native resolution for me is around, around here somewhere. That's the closest I can get. But I like to upscale a little bit because that little bit of super sampling really makes the reverb completely pop. It's just incredible. So I wouldn't recommend any more than this because I have tried uh, upscaling 
super sampling you know up to about sort of around here and i mean the the, the visual fidelity is just incredible but you really pay uh for the quality i mean actually to be honest even if you go down a little bit and go sort of as low as sort of 2000 or maybe 1136 sort of area you're still going to get an unmatched level of visual performance and you'll get a great boost in frame rate so but i would recommend to keep to around this kind of uh resolution here 2460 by 2408 somewhere around there is fine um you can even as you can see here like for instance i've got x plane that isn't actually uh 133 now it's changed you can do you can uh basically like nvidia you can do profiles so you you know you could have il2 or something else of working at a different resolution which i find really really useful and malware bytes wants to restart my computer no thanks so that is really important now i wouldn't recommend using using legacy reprojection mode that can make things a bit fuzzy for me personally i leave that off okay guys this next bit is very important as well to make sure that your asynchronous time warp projection is working correctly you need to go into the config file this can be found well i mean this will obviously change depending on your system but here um, it'll either be the C drive, most likely your C drive, depending on where you've uh, downloaded Steam. But program files, Steam, Steam VR, sorry, Steam apps, and then you need to go to Common, Mix Reality, VR Driver, Resources, and Settings. Now, just to make this even easier for you, I'm going to show you. This is imagine this is your drive, whatever that is. Program files, 86, Steam. Then you need to find Steam Apps. Then we need to go to Common, Mix Reality VR Driver, Resources, and Settings. My goodness. So you need to find that. And I'd recommend right clicking that, Send to Desktop, Create a Shortcut. That's what I've done. Now here you've got the all this gobbledygook here. Now all you need to make sure is that these back, uh, sorry, forward slashes are removed from this here because I think some of the some of the people are having problems because there's that uh, those forward slashes in the way that basically turns that off so you need to take them away take them away go away we don't need you so and this bit here you've got two options and I would recommend trying both of them depending on how you're finding your sim auto kind of does what it suggests basically it means that it comes on at 45 frames per second or you could have it on all the time by putting in motion vector now that means i would recommend you need to be at least achieving 30 frames per second in x-play now if it, if you do actually you get a quite a nice smooth experience it's not it can be a bit glitchy because basically the asynchronous time warp is on constantly all the time that makes things very interesting when you get to about 20 frames per second it can be pretty awful in the headset so i would kind of recommend keeping that to auto but make sure oops can't even spell auto there we go <laughs> um make sure that those forward slashes are removed okay my final part of this little video is to show you my current x-plane 11 settings this may and probably will change when vulcan gets here but let's just concentrate on the here and now uh, visual effects I would recommend keeping that at either medium or high do not go to maximum SSAO when you're in VR because you'll get a headache very quickly trust me it's not supported stay at high number of wheeled objects I have that at maximum but to be honest my CPU is I mean it's not I mean it's getting on a bit now I've had it for two years but it's still pretty beefy 8600k I recommend that CPU it's superb if you've got anything less than that, you know, just knock it down to high or even medium. It's, you know, it's, it will still look great, honestly. It won't matter too much. Um, texture quality. Now, I generally have that on maximum unless if you're using a lot of Orbex airports, particularly like East Midlands, Leeds, Bradford, Edinburgh, they are a killer for VRAM. And even with a 1080 Ti card or a 2080 Ti card, for, you know they say with 11 gigs it's not enough it just is not enough at the moment so just whack that down to high that makes a huge difference to smoothness particularly when you're loading in a lot of ortho scenery 
Um, so depending on what you're doing, you know, keep that either high or maximum. Reflection detail, well, that I've always left that a minimum, to be honest. Um, there's no sort of real obvious gains of keeping that anywhere else in terms of the visual fidelity of it. And it is a frame rate hogger. I don't think it's very well optimized either at the moment. So keep that minimum. Okay, this is the big one here, AA. Now I keep this at two times. Uh, I think the reverb, I, you know, you can see the jaggers in it quite a bit because it's the, you know a higher, sharper image, so you're seeing more. Um, if you are struggling with that, just knock it down to FX AA. It does soften the image a little bit, but you you won't get so much jaggies. Monty's about to howl at me, I think. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, Monty is about to go crazy at me because he's fed up of me talking at a screen and not him, but never mind, I'll carry on. If you're really struggling, knock it down to zero. Like, say if you're in London or, you know, in a an area where you're just not getting quite that frame rate, just knock it down to nothing and you'll be fine. And then once your frame rate's back up again, knock it up again. I have used four times SAA, SSAA. It's very nice in the reverb. But again, I don't think right now we can run that at a decent frame rate, to be honest. So really, that's it, guys, really. I just... Any, if I've missed something, which I'm sure I have, please just post me a comment uh, and I'll answer it or maybe do an, another update video to this. Um, but, you know, the Reverb, guys, is such a fantastic headset that just it just needs a bit of time to set up. It really does. Uh, and I recommend, as I say, going through that guide, the THUDS guide. I know it's DCS related, but it really does apply to any sim. Uh, just go through it step by step and you will have a great experience just as i say make sure your ipd is in the correct range and just uh, yeah i hope this is useful to some of you and uh, i'll see you again on the next one take care bye bye for now okay i think monty wants a walk <laughs>